I was a kid, I loved stargazing. If there was a meteor shower, my dad would help my brothers and me climb up to the roof of my house. We would lay out a blanket and lie on our backs spotting meteors. I'm Julia Gustafson, producer of this episode. I'm a student at Cornell University, and I study planetary science. Basically, that means that I study... Any planetary object that is not the Earth. That's the voice of Dr. Nicole Lewis, an assistant professor here at Cornell, as well as the deputy director of the Carl Sagan Institute. I study planets around other stars. Today, I'll be talking with her and another astronomer I work with to discuss space telescopes, particularly the James Webb Space Telescope. We'll break down what they do, why they're important, and why this one has garnered so much attention in the news. I remember when I was a kid, my dad had this kind of fancy looking telescope, and it never quite worked right, but it really sparked my curiosity in astronomy and studying distant objects. Um, Did you ever have a telescope as a kid? Yeah, in fact, I was gifted a telescope as a child, although I'm not sure that that the telescope is what brought me into planetary science. I know that I struggled a lot trying to figure out how to work, um, how, how to make it work and how to look at things, but one of the first things I was able to finally look at was Jupiter and see its moons, which was really, really awe-inspiring for me. But I think in general, you know, getting into planetary science was really, um, I had a passion uh, for engineering and science and math, and I could see that there were problems I could bring those skills to bear in planetary science. And on the topic of telescopes, there's been a lot of buzz surrounding the upcoming launch of the James Webb Space Telescope. But space telescopes are a lot different from kind of small telescopes we can hold, or even larger telescopes at observatories. So what makes space telescopes different, and what kind of benefits do they bring? Yeah, I mean, so space telescopes are really an engineering challenge. We have to figure out how to take a telescope and put it on a rocket and have it survive that journey into space and then operate without having a human sitting behind it. And so that's fundamentally one of the biggest differences between space telescopes and ground-based telescopes. It's really hard to do, and so we have to ask ourselves, is there a really good reason for us to send this telescope into space? And and often that reason is that we need to get above Earth's atmosphere, which blocks certain wavelengths of light. Are space telescopes generally bigger than ground-based telescopes? Well, actually, in general, ground-based telescopes um, tend to be larger because it's actually much easier to build a large telescope on the ground than to build a large telescope that you then have to sort of origami fold up and then put on a rocket fairing and launch into space. So a lot of people are familiar with the Hubble Space Telescope, which has been in operation for years. But James Webb is a bit different. It has some different instruments on it. It's a lot bigger. It's orbiting in a different spot. So what kinds of things can James Webb do that Hubble might not be able to do? Yeah, so one of the biggest things is that the James Webb Space Telescope will operate what are called infrared wavelengths. So these are wavelengths of light similar to what you would see if you put on night vision goggles. So the type of light that, you know, we as humans emit and also what planets and other astronomical objects emit. And so Hubble actually doesn't have access to these wavelengths of light. It looks mostly in what's the ultraviolet optical and what we call the near-infrared. And so it'll look fundamentally at the universe in an entirely new set of, of wavelengths of light that will give us a new perspective. JWST is also bigger than Hubble, so it will be able to collect more light, which means it will be able to see fainter objects. And will your research team be using this infrared data or other data from James Webb? Yeah, so the team here at Cornell will be looking at about 200 to 300 hours of data from the James Webb Space Telescope in what we call the first cycle. Um, We'll primarily be looking at planets that are orbiting other stars. And we'll be looking at everything from um, sort of terrestrial-sized planets around small stars all the way up to big giant planets that orbit very close to their stars, so-called hot Jupiters. And how far away are these planetary systems that you might be looking at? Yeah, I mean, so some of them are as close as, say, 10 light years away. Now, real quick, a light year is almost 6 trillion miles. 10 light years sounds far, but the very closest star to us, Proxima Centauri, is about 4 light years away. So, relatively speaking, 10 light years is only a little over twice as far as our closest neighbor, Not all that far when you consider that our own galaxy is 100,000 light years wide. So many of the systems that we're looking at because we want to target systems that are bright um, are in fact some of the nearest systems to our own. One of the scientists on this research team is Ishan Mishra. 
a fifth-year graduate student at Cornell's astronomy department. He is also a planetary scientist and studies planets both inside and outside of our solar system. Um, so talking more about the James Webb Space Telescope, um, obviously exoplanets, since they're so far away, are just much more difficult to study and get information from. So yeah. what specific kinds of information will James Webb be getting that can tell us things about planetary surfaces? Okay, so specifically for planetary surfaces, uh, James Webb is going to look at the light that is emitted from the planetary surfaces. As Dr. Lewis mentioned earlier, James Webb has specialized instruments to look specifically at the infrared region of the electromagnetic spectrum. What it's going to do is, is it, it's going to look at the light coming from surfaces of planets that are very close to their star. And so they are very, very hot. As you look at that emission from the planet at different wavelengths or different colors within the infrared region, uh, then you can tell something about what the composition of the surface might be like. And Ishan says that there are models we can use to distinguish very specific things about these rocky planetary surfaces, whether they have loose rock or sand, and what specific minerals make up their surface. So far, the telescopes scientists have used have only been able to observe very broad characteristics of planet surfaces. So this is a pretty new thing that James Webb will allow us to study. Talking about this research begs the question, why do we care? Ishan says that when it comes to things like Europa, there's the chance of discovering some sort of extraterrestrial life. But when it comes to planets that we know can't support life, it's actually more about understanding how individual planetary systems formed and how they change over time, which in turn can help us better understand our own solar system. And so all of this uh, characterizing of the characterization of the planets is in service of uh, trying to understand how uh, planetary systems form. Now, keep in mind that all of this is just from the perspective of planetary science. James Webb will be gathering data that is relevant to other disciplines of astronomy as well, particularly related to galaxies and the universe as a whole. Keep your eyes peeled for the images that James Webb will be sending back around summertime in 2022, as well as all the new research findings that are sure to come. Many thanks to Dr. Nicole Lewis and Ishan Mishra for being guests on this show. I'm Julia Gustafson. Thanks for listening. <laughs> <laughs>